You see, I was raised by parents who moved here before the 1979 revolution in Iran. They had me and they didn't go back because they thought that opportunity in life would be much better here for their children. They left a very comfortable lifestyle back home to basically restart here with English as their second language. They instilled in me at a very young age the importance of education, but not only that, the importance of some level of success to the point where at least you weren't struggling in life, you weren't constantly stressed over finances. From a very young age, I had this insane responsibility, this feeling of responsibility of not providing my family any undue financial pressure that they already had being immigrants here. So I worked from as far back as I could remember. In fact, I worked before that. I guess you could say I had a very entrepreneurial spirit as a child. I kind of started my own business. I remember we had this huge mistletoe tree in our side yard. And every Christmas, I'd grab a ladder and I'd climb up this mistletoe tree. And I'd cut down all the mistletoe. And I'd grab my brother and I'd force him to help me, child labor, you know? I suppose, um, as you can tell by now, my brother gets the short end of the stick in all my stories. So it's a good thing he's not here today. So we'd grab all these mistletoes, we'd put them in plastic bags, and then I'd tie red or green ribbon around them. And then I'd walk about a block away to our local Seas Candies. And I'd set up a table outside, and I'd sell these mistletoes for $5 each. And I will never forget this woman who ran out, came out of Seas Candies and came up to my mistletoe table, and she held one in her hand. And I couldn't have been more than 10 years old at this point. And I remember specifically looking up to her and saying, Ma'am, if you buy two, I'll sell it to you for $12. And she had the most confused look on her face. She was like, but honey, you're selling them for $5 each. Wouldn't that make it $10? But you've got the biggest mistletoe I've got in your hand. It's bigger than all the rest. So that one's really $8. I'm giving you a dollar discount. She laughed, she thought it was endearing. I was little and she thought it was cute. And in the end, she actually ended up buying four. So that was the moment when, and I didn't realize it at the time, but my little negotiating skills began. Now you may ask what happened to that fiery, tenacious girl who asked for what she wanted and got for what she asked. Well, I suppose the same as what happens to a lot of us in life, in the real world. Got into the career force and I was riddled with fear. Fear that I wouldn't know how to negotiate, that they wouldn't think I was worth what I was asking for. Even worse, that my boss would think I was no longer committed to my job and would fire me. But most important for me, that if I wasn't successful in what it is I was trying to achieve, that I would deem myself a disappointment and therefore be a disappointment to my family in the career choice I decided to pursue for myself. Now, this is not uncommon. There was a survey done by graduating students at Carnegie Mellon that actually showed that only 7% of women negotiate their salaries compared to 50% of men. That's crazy. And on top, there's many reasons for this. There have been numerous journal publications one being the Organization of Human Behavior and Processes, that have shown that there is a social cost when women negotiate. We have negative repercussions when we negotiate. What happens? We're seen as bitchy, greedy, demanding, and we become unlikable. As a gender that loves friendships and groups and community, someone not liking me? Someone thinking that I'm a bitch, I don't want that confrontation. That makes me feel really uncomfortable. So you know what, I'm just gonna sit here and say nothing and accept what they're giving me instead of standing up for what I'm worth. Now, negotiation doesn't just boil down to salary. It's embedded in our everyday lives so much so that you don't even realize it. It's the restaurant we wanna go to or our friend. It's the service we're paying for when the plumber comes out to fix our toilet. It's your next home purchase, car purchase. It's even embedded in your personal lives when it comes to dating and relationships. 
I negotiate with my husband all the time over household chores. And let me tell you, I get him to do it. That's part of the reason why I married the guy. He was very easily, you know, amenable to things. <laughs> it took me five years to get fed up for that little 10-year-old fiery girl to come back and say, you know what, that's it. Enough. It's time for you to move on, find an opportunity that you're actually worthwhile. And that was the moment that the spark of the idea of negotiate like a woman came about. I started thinking, if I'm going to negotiate, I have to figure out how I'm going to do it from the perspective of how it'll benefit others. That I'm not going to devalue myself, and that I'm no longer going to listen to what other people say. I understood that as women, we are more accepted when we come from a communal perspective when we show how we're benefiting a group or community or another person. So when I was negotiating this new salary at this new job, I listened to what my immediate boss wanted for himself as well as for the company as a whole. And I told him, based on my experience, my resume, my background, and my knowledge, how I would not only help him with his immediate goals, but the company's goals as a whole. I asked for double the salary that I was getting from the previous job because I knew that was the going rate for that position. And I got it. Thank you. I realized that I can no longer underestimate my own value and worth. Did you know when women were asked the average salary for a particular role, they would say 3 to 32% less than men did for the same role with the same exact experience. Perhaps that's because historically, we've been receiving 20 to 30% less for the same role with the same experience. And I realize we need, society needs to change, the norms need to change, and it's only gonna change if it starts and begins with us. The most important thing I learned is, I'm not gonna give a damn what anybody else thinks anymore. And I don't mean that in a mean way. I was so consumed with what my friends and family, colleagues, acquaintances, strangers, I mean, people in society who didn't even affect my life on a daily basis were thinking. And this fear and being consumed with what other people thought kept me in the cycle of not progressing in life. If I wasn't going to get paid what I deserve, I was going to stand up for myself. If I wasn't being treated right in my relationship, I was going to stand up for myself. If that car salesman was going to be pushy and aggressive with me, I'm going to step outside of my womanly comfort zone. I'm going to negotiate three dealerships against each other, get the lowest price, be pushy and aggressive right back, and I'm going to stand up for myself. I now negotiate everything. You name it, I probably negotiate it. I have friends in the audience today that are probably nodding their head right now and saying, yeah, she does. <laughs> Likely I'd negotiate my own funeral if I could. It took me five precious years of my life to realize I will no longer live in fear or concern of what other people think of me, and I am going to value my own worth. I will never, ever let that little 10-year-old girl leave me anymore, and I will always negotiate like a woman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.